Jody, a busy mom and businesswoman, never thought she would reach a point where she would desperately wish for her son, Ben, to stop playing video games and pay attention to his phone. Ben, an 11-year-old avid gamer, was on the verge of defeating the final boss in his game when Jody intervened, prying his phone from his hands. Ben pleaded with his mom to give it back, but Jody stood her ground, expressing her concern about his excessive screen time. An argument ensued between them, with Ben accusing Jody of not understanding him and Jody reprimanding Ben for being too engrossed in his virtual world. Their exchange turned bitter, with Ben calling Jody's heart a heart of stone, and Jody's face went pale with hurt. She sent Ben to his room, and he retreated to his cupboard, feeling misunderstood. As Ben lay on his Naruto comforter, he reflected on his favorite hero's unwavering kindness towards others, even villains. He realized that maybe his mom was also hurting and lonely since his parents' divorce. Ben mustered up the courage to approach Jody and asked if they could go to Comic-Con together, hoping to connect with her. Jody initially dismissed the idea, but Ben's words struck a chord with her. The following week, Jody planned a surprise outing to the park with Ben, with donuts in hand. However, as the time passed, Ben didn't return from school, and Jody grew increasingly worried. She tried calling him repeatedly, but his phone was unreachable. Panic set in, and Jody's mind raced with fear. She couldn't believe she was missing the sound of video games. After 37 unsuccessful calls, Jody realized Ben's phone battery had died, and she was frantic. She paced restlessly, unable to contain her worry. Without a second thought, she rushed to the garage and drove off in her car, determined to find her son and make amends. Jody's heart raced as she raced into the parking lot of Ben's school, her mind consumed with worry. She was on her way to the principal's office, hoping for answers when she spotted some of Ben's friends playing on the playground. Desperation took over as she called out to them. When last did any of you see Ben? Jody called, rushing towards the playground. The kids looked at each other, unsure. Only one of them stepped forward. Last time I saw Ben, he was with a man in a chicken suit. He left school with him, the boy said, causing Jody's blood to run cold. A man in a chicken suit? What did he look like? Jody asked urgently, her heart pounding in her chest. Ah, uh, big yellow and covered in feathers, the boy replied with a smirk, and his friends burst into laughter. Jody's mind raced as she sprinted to the principal's office, but her plea for help fell on deaf ears. The principal claimed that the school was not responsible for pupils after hours, leaving Jody feeling helpless and frustrated. Refusing to give up, Jody returned to her car and started driving around town, determined to find Ben herself. She drove from one end of town to the other, scanning the streets for any sign of her son. Tears streamed down her face as she grew more desperate with each passing moment. Just as she was about to pull into the police station, Jody spotted a poster stuck to a wall that caught her eye. It read Comic Con and she realized with a jolt that it was happening today. She couldn't believe she had forgotten about it, but she knew Ben loved comic books and superheroes. Jody raced to the convention center where the event was taking place, her heart pounding in her chest. As she entered the crowded center, she realized that finding Ben would be no easy task. The place was filled with adults and kids dressed in elaborate costumes, some looking like life-sized puppets. She made her way to the outdoor area and climbed on some boxes beside a stall, scanning the sea of fantastical creatures. And then she saw it, an ugly chicken suit that looked vaguely familiar, with a child walking beside it. Determination took over as Jody leaped down and started pushing her way through the crowd, ignoring the mud and chaos around her. She stumbled over the tail of a big red dragon but was helped up by a kind stranger dressed as a bright pink leopard. The stranger handed her some wipes to clean up and suggested she ask the info booth for help. Jody thanked the leopard and hurried towards the stage where Ben was heading. She was stopped by a security officer, but she pleaded with him to make an announcement to find her son. Tears streamed down her face as she poured her heart out, feeling embarrassed and out of place, but her only focus was finding Ben and holding him close. Moved by Jody's distress, the security officer allowed her to speak to the MC. She begged into the microphone. Will 11-year-old Ben please come to the stage? 
Your mom is looking for you, and she's very worried. Jody held her breath, praying that Ben would hear her plea. Her heart leaped with relief as she saw Ben appear on the stage, looking surprised but unharmed. She rushed towards him, wrapping him in a tight embrace, vowing to never let him go again. She was immensely grateful to the kind strangers who had helped her in her desperate search, and relieved that her son was safe. Jody stood on the stairs leading to the stage, scanning the crowd anxiously as the MC repeated the announcement. Her heart leaped with joy when she finally spotted her son, Ben, among the sea of faces. But her elation quickly turned to anger when she saw the familiar ugly chicken costume next to him. Her ex-husband, Chris, had shown up, wearing the same ridiculous outfit he had worn years ago when he worked at a fast food restaurant after losing his job in marketing. Chris approached, pleading with Jody not to punish Ben. Ben, in his excitement, took Jody's hand and explained that he had asked Chris to come because she had declined to attend the event. Jody was livid, realizing that she hadn't been informed about this arrangement. She turned her glare on Ben, who apologized, explaining that he was having so much fun with his dad that he forgot about his phone. Caught off guard by Ben's sincerity, Jody hesitated. She looked at Chris, who was also urging her to join them. Her heart softened as she saw her son's hopeful eyes. Chris reached beneath his wing and pulled out a bundle of fabric, a brunette wig with the iconic buns of Princess Leah from Jody's favorite movie. She was touched, noticing the uneven hem where Chris had clearly sewn it himself. Ben rushed to participate in a contest, and Chris took the opportunity to talk to Jody. He expressed his desire to be part of Ben's life, despite their differences, and emphasized the importance of setting a good example for their son. Jody was moved, wiping away tears as she realized that her love for Ben and her desire to see him happy outweighed her anger towards Chris. As Jody and Chris sat together on the grass, a big red bird interrupted their moment. They laughed awkwardly, but Chris suggested they go support Ben in the contest. They arrived in time to see Ben giving a thumbs up to the audience, exclaiming that he would never give up, dressed as Naruto. Jody and Chris chanted his name, and soon the whole crowd joined in. Ben looked ecstatic on stage. From that day on, everything changed. Ben spent time with Chris regularly, allowing Jody to relax more. Ben's attachment to his phone diminished, and he spent more quality time with his family and friends. Jody and Chris gradually developed a solid co-parenting relationship, which grew stronger even after they both moved on and married new partners. They learned to prioritize Ben's happiness and set aside their differences for his sake, setting a positive example of cooperation and respect for their son's future.